Welcome to episode number 5 of my Kazuha Fan Arts Drawing Series. Let's just get on with it, yeah? <laughs> I've still got so much more to do before I even say this is even complete. Now, I do have a story for you, and it's about me this time around. Um, so it's not really anything gaming related. And it's where I did mention this uh, some time ago in a first time video. Um, it was back with the Bryce Rant one and the other video about where it was like my policy sort of thing. It's quite a funny story that one. In my other videos I've mentioned that I've got a web design degree because I used to do web design ages ago like 2010 and a few years after that and such right. So naturally I've been going for interviews for web design jobs right and it's where there was this one with a company called VTS Design. Um, I'll be honest, they're not that bad, but they're still pretty questionable, right? And it's where, when I applied for the job for them ages ago, right, they were like saying, oh, this is front-end developer, so it's like HTML and CSS, that sort of thing. So you like, make the visual side of the websites, right? And it's where, I thought, oh, cool, I love making websites, which is front-end based rather than back-end, right? This is where it gets really weird. Well, not weird, but you know, pretty questionable, right? And so when I came to him, right, I had to go by public transport back then because I didn't have a car back then. But this was back in 2014, 2015 sort of era. And it's where when I went to him, they were like saying, oh, do you know Joomla? And I was like thinking, no, I don't. And I was like, all oh, right, okay then. And then they made me do a very simple test on HTML and CSS, that sort of thing. Right, and afterwards, when I got the result back by email, I said, nah, you don't know Joomla at all, so we can't let you in. And I was like thinking, they said on the job spec it's HTML and CSS. It didn't mention Joomla anywhere. So why did they actually call me over for an interview, the face to face one? And then it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like it was something completely different. It's like, can't they see from a CV? that it doesn't have Joomla on it. It's just like, they were just like wasting time and effort on my part, but you know. They were also wasting their own time as well. That's like applying for football, and then when you go there, it's golf instead. And this isn't the only time this has happened, right? There was another company not that long ago, like, right? Back in January this year, there was another company I had an interview for, and it was called Everard. And they're like a car garage company, so you know, they like make cars and stuff. But they needed IT people for their website maintenance and things like that, right? And it said on the job spec, oh, this is PHP developer. So I thought, oh, cool, I've done that before, even though that's back end. But, you know, and it's where when I went to them, they're like saying, okay, we're going to do a test for you on Laravel. So because Laravel is like a framework of some kind. And because I never ever used Laravel before, I didn't win the job either. <laughs> so I had to drive because uh, I have a car now. I've had I've been driving on my own for about five years now. Because I had no Laravel experience, that's why I didn't get it. But it's like, but it said PHP developer in the title, and it and when I read the job spec afterwards for Everard. I was like looking at the bottom and it said desirable, Laravel. But it didn't say that was the main part of the job spec. It said things like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, PHP, that sort of thing. It was like, it had one tiny mention of Laravel right at the bottom saying, oh, desirable. Desirable basically means you don't have to have this, but it does help. And also in the main responsibilities, it mentioned React or view but i've never used those two but even then those two didn't even come up in the test at all it was just laravel just completely that's like going to applying for a football again applying for a football job and then when you go to them it's like oh we want you to do basketball golf uh cricket that sort of thing and it's like that's not what i want to do at all. And that's another thing, right? With Everard, they were like all the way in a place called Newport, which is near Hull. And so I had to drive on a motorway and everything 
for a job that was, you know, false advertising basically. It's like, there, I went and wasted like over an hour's worth of petrol and a lot of time. I wasted time and effort on this company as well basically. I drove all the way to a place called Newport only for them to be falsely advertising it as something completely different. It was just stupid. And they were telling me over by email, oh sorry that you couldn't win the job. I was like, well, it was Laravel, not PHP. They said PHP developer in the job title. And it was nothing to do with PHP. It's just like, will people stop falsely advertising it as something completely different? That's like, like I mentioned earlier, that's like applying for football and then they want you to do a completely different sport instead. It's just stupid. They're just wasting people's time. So just like, how are they even like in business at all to keep f falsely advertising straight things? It's just stupid. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's why I'm like, you know, getting pretty stressed out here. That's why I've been telling people offline this, but I like doing animations better and I like drawing better anyway. So I'd rather just have like some kind of art job instead. But you know, but yeah, that's why I don't like web design very much. The, the problem with web design is that there's like 50 million different types of it. And if you don't have the right one, the companies will just say no to you. Even though it's like, well, why did they say it was PHP or HTML if it's something completely different when you go to them? That's just false advertising, just wasting time. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And they even, and another problem with these companies is that it's somehow your fault for applying to them in the first place and you have to be the one that loses out and you don't get your travel expenses covered or anything. There's only ever been one time I actually got my travel expenses uh, covered and that was with a company called iTouch Systems, their web design based as well, well mostly. And it's where, believe it or not, the iTouch Systems never got back to me. Even now, I had this interview back in 2015 or 2014 odd, and it's where they said, oh, we'll get back to you. Eight whole years later, they still haven't got back to me. So it's pretty obvious that they're not going to recruit me at all. And it's like, I just don't understand why these stupid interviewers keep messing about with me and just wasting time. It's like, you know, it's just really stupid. Recently, I've been getting into a video game called Sonic Frontiers, right? I've not tuned into Sonic series for quite some time. <laughs> I've actually done two Sonic Let's Plays. I've done Sonic 1 and Sonic CD. So I'll put a card on the top right corner if you're interested in those. They're actually quite good Let's Plays, I think. But yeah, and it's where I was on social media, right? And it's where I got an advert saying, oh look, there's Sonic Frontiers and it's out now. And it was already released for like three months and it said, oh, you can get this for half price instead of it being £50, it's £25. So I thought, oh, cool. <laughs> Very popular game series that actually has a half price sale on. It was like, well, why not? Let's actually go get it. So I did. I was surprised that it was only like 33, 34 gigabytes large. I was expecting it to be a bit more than that. Right, and it's where I played like the first 45 odd minutes of the game. It's good so far, but um, the biggest problem is that I'll be honest, the graphics is the graphics is not that great. It's like PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 sort of level. It, I'll be honest, the graphics of Sonic Frontiers is definitely not as good as uh, Devil May Cry 5, and it's where surprisingly enough, Devil May Cry 5 actually. The file size for it is 40 gigabytes big, so it's actually a larger file size than Sonic Frontiers is, so you know. I swear, I noticed that when I played Sonic Frontiers, just the uh, beginning part, it's where I saw some pixelation like this one here. So when I saw that, I was thinking, uh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking, well nothing's perfect so it's just like one or two bad textures that should be okay but if you've got a lot of low-end textures like Final Fantasy 7 Remake which I did say that in a very old video then yeah there's gonna be some like issues there's gonna be a few complaints anyway <laughs> but yeah before Sonic Frontiers was even out right there were people online that go around saying oh Sonic Frontiers is Earth as in 
the swear word version. Obviously, I'm not going to say the full word here, right? And it's just like, they were like bashing on it so much, and it's like, you've only played the demo, and this is what you think. And it's like, you can't just call a game S, or garbage, whatever, if the full game's not out, right? And it's where, I know I've only played 45 minutes of it right now, well, as of now, and it's like, it's actually pretty good so far. I was actually surprised that, that Sega gave Sonic quite a few new abilities. I was like, holy moly, really? <laughs> I will say that this is probably a me problem, and it's where gameplay-wise, for some reason, I can't get light speed dash to work. You know that you have a line of rings and you, and you zip through them. Yeah, in Sonic Adventures 2, you can go through them really easy, but for some reason, even when I press the correct button it doesn't even do it half the time so i'm not sure what i'm doing wrong it could be me it could be the controller i don't know what it is but humming attack seems to work perfectly fine for me i don't know why i don't know what it is but yeah i did read online that sonic frontiers has sold three million units and i thought oh that's actually pretty good but i was expecting it to sell a bit more than that but there you go <laughs> uh um, well, someone said that Sonic 1 sold like 20 million units, and that's just the Mega Drive version, so that's not including the uh, Steam version or any other Sonic 1 parts anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was like thinking, okay. Now, someone else said that the Sonic series, someone else told me that the Sonic series has sold like 150 million units, and that's every single Sonic game combined. So I thought, that's actually pretty good, because the Mario series has sold like 900 million units all together so i thought oh wow that's actually a lot <laughs> i heard that the final fantasy series has sold 143 million units so sonic has only just beaten final fantasy <laughs> only just and that's funny because final fantasy is like 1987 i think it's 1987 or it's 1986 it's one of those two whereas sonic series is 1991 series so it's like you know that's actually pretty impressive that a 991 series managed to sell managed to outsell something else that's been around for much longer i thought like, okay then but then again final fantasy series is for like teens and up so that's probably why whereas sonic series is like for like three year olds and up the most amazing thing about sonic frontiers is that uh it's actually for seven year olds and up and it's because it's a little bit violent so i was like oh okay okay then <laughs> Oh, one thing about Sonic Frontiers is Sonic's voice. I've noticed that he seems to have a new voice actor for this game, and he sounds really manly. He sounds like he's 25 years old, whereas in Sonic Adventure 2, he sounds like he's got like a teenager voice, so I thought, yeah, he sounds too manly in Sonic Frontiers. Uh, I was expecting him to have more of a, you know, higher, higher pitch voice type thing, because I'm used to having Sonic having a teenager type voice rather than a uh, manly voice. <laughs> it's just like, please don't tell me that Tails is going to sound like a man next. But I have heard Tails' voice already in uh, Sonic Frontier, and he actually sounds like a eight, 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 8 or 9 year old, but yeah, you know. <laughs> I actually feel kind of bad because in my Sonic CD playthrough, I remember when I said, oh, I don't like Amy. I don't ultra hate her, but I don't like her. She just acts a bit stupid to be honest <laughs> okay, I actually feel bad because I went and I said oh, yeah yeah go on Metal Sonic you can take her away yeah keep take, take her away from me sort of thing right and it's where I went to Leeds Comic Con not that long ago it was back in beginning June 2023 and so I actually met an Amy cosplayer there and I was like oh, I actually feel bad because I went around I went around saying how much I don't like her I don't ultra hate her by the way I had to talk to the cosplayer for about two minutes, so I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like thinking, good job the cosplayer did not watch my uh, Sonic CG playthrough, because they'd be very disheartened if I found out that I went around bashing on Amy. <laughs> Thank you for watching the video. If you want to actually show your support, you may tick like, share, or subscribe to my channel. You can even do all three of them if you want to. So yeah, and with that, I'll end up the video. So thanks you for watching.